Well, thank you very much, Lori, uh, not only for those kind words, but for your extraordinary leadership. Keep up the good work. You're doing a superb job. And to all your colleagues at the Bridge and Turnpike Authority, thank you very, very much. I want to recognize Governor McKee and my colleague, Congressman Amo and Tom Giordano from the Partnership for Rhode Island, and all the local officials we have here today. I, I hope I get them all. Steve Corrente, the town administrator, <coughs> uh, Portsmouth Town Administrator, Rich Rainer, Rich, and then we have Sue Donovan and June Beekman. They are organized according to their cities. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle McGraw, I believe, is here, and Terry Contraven, and Sen State Senator Linda Ujithusa. Thank you very much, ladies. And uh, finally, I want to recognize my uh, colleague and partner, uh, Senator Whitehouse. Sheldon was uh, one of the key, if not the key, architect in the creation of the PROTECT grant program and the delivery of these federal funds. So without him, we would be here today uh, lamenting the fact that the bridge is going to close quickly. But now it's got 50 years of renewed life. For nearly a hundred years, the Mount Hope Bridge has carried Rhode Islanders from Aquidneck Island to the mainland. Uh, but those decades of use combined with salt air and tough New England winters have taken a toll. Uh, Please to give the pun. Uh, we need to act now to protect the cables that support the bridge. And so I've been pleased to work with Senator Whitehouse and the rest of the delegation to deliver this $17 million award under the new PROTECT grant program. The good news is the work on the bridge is already underway, thanks to a $10 million earmark that Senator Whitehouse and I secured for the project last year. That brings the total federal funding for this project to $27 million, and it would allow the Turnpike and the Bridge Authority to extend the life of the bridge for at least 50 years. I'm hoping for 100, but at least 50. But let me emphasize again, none of this would have been possible without the leadership of President Biden, who made enactment of the bipartisan infrastructure law a top priority during his first year in office, and Senator Whitehouse, who worked hard to make sure the PROTECT grant program was part of that law. And it was also critically important to have Lori at the helm of the Turnpike and Bridge Authority. She and her team have been laser focused and relentless in pursuing the funds needed to preserve Mount Hope Bridge as well as the Pell Bridge. I think we got, what, about $90 million for the Pell Bridge? 2.5 or yes. <laughs> <counting> <laughs> <to> the <penny. laughs> A little walking around change we dropped off at the <laughs> office. And, but it's uh, a day to uh, congratulate ourselves. Uh, there's more work to be done, but this is a good day. And with that, let me turn it over to my colleague who helped cr create the PROTECT grant program. Thank you, Jack. This is a very happy day, and I am thrilled to be here with uh, our governor, with Jack and Gabe, with uh, town administrators Contente and Reina, both sides, um, and with Representatives Donovan and Speakman and McGaw and Courtfriend and Senator Ujafusa. We've got very, very good coverage because this is a very uh, happy day. We're standing here where the old Bristol Ferry landing used to be, and right over there is where the ferry would depart Portsmouth and come over here bringing goods from what were then the farms of Portsmouth and people over here to the mainland and to markets, and that was the way things were until 1929, when the car of choice was the Ford Model A. If you look at the picture of the opening of this bridge, you got people still wearing top hats. This beautiful bridge is coming up on its 100th anniversary. It is a work of industrial art. It is the model for the beautiful Pell Bridge, and it would have been not just an economic catastrophe, but a really symbolic catastrophe for Rhode Island if we were to lose it. So I was thrilled to be able to get the PROTECT Act into the bipartisan infrastructure law, to get the $17 million for this project, thanks to Lori's advocacy and Jack's advocacy and Gabe's advocacy. There's a 
sometimes persistence is the charm. We took three runs at the Federal Department of Transportation before we got this grant done. So persistence pays. And of course, uh, working with Jack, who's a senior member of the appropriations team and can make magical things happen, we were able to get the $10 million that preceded this through just plain what we used to call earmarks. So this is a very happy day. And um, from 1929 to now is the first stage. And if you add 75 years, which is kind of the expectation for what this additional protection of these cables will do, that takes us to 2099. And I think we can be very happy that this absolutely gorgeous work of industrial art is going to be serving this community and our state through to 2099. And uh, thank you so much to the Turnpike and Bridge Authority for their maintenance and work through the years. It really is, it's just a gorgeous thing. Not everybody has a bridge like this. This is a, I just love this bridge. <laughs> so it is really uh, terrific to be here. I'll, I'll just add, you know, mentioning the Newport Bridge, we got $82 million for a similar dehumidification project for the Newport Bridge which is part of four projects that add to $300 million in federal grants that are on the ground in Rhode Island right now coming through another program, not the PROTECT program, but the INFRA program, which I uh, had a role in creating in the Environment and Public Works Committee. The Missing Moves Quonset Connections, the Newport Bridge, the North Providence Viaduct Rebuild, and the Route 146 overhaul that are all underway right now. So, as Jack said, the uh, president's work on getting infrastructure going, there was a former guy who used to talk a lot about Infrastructure Week, didn't manage to get it done. We got it done, and there's $300 million on the ground in Rhode Island because of it through these programs and this project. So with that, let me turn it over to Congressman Gabe Ammo, who I said carried our are we senators through this project from the House side, so. And was traveling with the President yesterday on Air Force One. Pretty cool start. Come on up, Gabe. Well, thank you, Senator Whitehouse, for that gracious introduction. And man, I'm tired from carrying the load, uh, <laughs> you know, for these senators here. Uh, but in all seriousness, uh, I get to be on uh, the greatest team uh, in America, the Rhode Island Congressional Delegation, and the bigger state team that we have, led by our great governor, uh, Dan McKee, by uh, all of the members of the General Assembly present. I know protocol has been established, but I acknowledge you all, uh, as well as the great uh, leadership of our cities and towns, uh, the real backbone uh, of our state. And certainly, Lori, thank you for all of your leadership. And Tom, thank you for making this a cross-sector uh, engagement to make sure we get the dollars that we need. So, you know, we're gathered here to celebrate the, the, the $27 million, as you've heard, uh, the $10 million that our, our senators secured, the $17 million uh, from the PROTECT grant uh, based on Senator Whitehouse's great uh, advocacy and leadership in creating uh, the PROTECT grant program and the passage of the bipartisan infrastructure law signed uh, by one of my former bosses, President Biden. And that's historic, that's transformational, but what is more important is that it hits the needs that we have here uh, in our communities and uh, this day is a celebration of that. And make no mistake uh, that this funding is a testament uh, and an investment in the future of our state, in the ocean state. Uh, for so many residents uh, and visitors, the suspension bridge uh, here is an iconic symbol of Rhode Island. You saw Senator Whitehouse's glee uh, in celebrating this bridge because it is a special thing. Not everybody's got these bridge, bridges. And, uh, you know, the Mount Hope Bridge uh, opened on a historic day, one that lives in a, a little bit of infamy on October 24th. 1929. But it's a picture of contrast that a bridge was built here, making our economy move stronger while, you know, and throughout the country it was a, a tough day, uh, Black Thursday. Now, we uh, have the, the, the opportunity to, to build upon the progress of this bridge that was memorialized 
being add, added to the National Register of Historic Places in 1976. Uh, we know uh, that, that ultimately, though, Father Time is undefeated. And we are required to invest uh, in this bridge to deal with the challenges of climate change, uh, which have weakened the, the t cables supporting the weight of this bridge. And so we're extending the life of the Mount Hope, Hope Bridge. We protect the motorists who use the bridge to travel to and from Aquidneck Island. We safeguard the essential freight corridor and commercial artery for coastal Rhode Island. And above all, we provide all of the residents of these communities throughout the state a return on investment. And so I'm grateful uh, that this is an example of good stewardship of public dollars, uh, that we will have workers who will earn family sustaining wages working on this project and we will strengthen the connections that bind our communities, uh, that bind the East Bay and Aquidneck Island and inspire local economic activity. So I stand here with great gratitude uh, for the leadership of our senators, for the collaboration with all of the elected officials here, with all of the folks at the Bridge and Turnpike Authority who are doing such essential work to make sure that we keep going. And with that, I turn uh, it over to our governor, Dan McKee. Air Force One, wow, that's pretty good, Dave. You're kind of, uh, you know, representing in Rhode Island all over the place and with the administration. But it's great to be here um, today. Uh, again, as I publicly uh, state that our congressional delegation is uh, really helping Rhode Island uh, in so many ways, uh, you know, recover from the COVID and then uh, making sure that our economy is strong and making sure that uh, the work is getting done. So Senator Reed, White House, along with our Congressman Baldano and, uh, and Seth Magaziner, we wanna, we wanna thank you so much. It's great to be here with, with Laurie. Um, Laurie did remind me that our moms were either born during the construction of this bridge or when it just opened up. We, we share about the same age. My mom's gonna be 95, 96, your mom just turned 95. So that kind of puts it in context of what we just heard from a uh, congressional delegation about the history of this bridge and how long it's been here. And, and, and the, this PROTECT uh, grant, these funds that are coming in, as I mentioned, both the $17 million and the $10 million, uh, we're, not, we're not standing here uh, having this celebration uh, without that help. So we thank you for the, for the, uh, for the funding. Uh, and also with um, our partnership with Rhode Island Town, thank you so much. Uh, you reminded me as well, about two years ago, we, we started this, uh, this concept of really connecting in a partnership with Rhode Island with our municipal leadership. Thank you to our municipal leaders back there and our, our General Assembly leaders as well for being here. Uh, but that connection between, uh, you know, uh, partnership with Rhode Island and our local communities has really paid dividends in many ways. And I think this is another reflection of just that. So. I want to just say that, um, you know, we're doing the work on the Pell Bridge, as it was mentioned, uh, and uh, we're going to build that brand new bridge uh, called Washington Bridge that will outlast our lifetimes very shortly as well. Uh, and uh, we won't be there when we celebrate the 95th year of the Washington Bridge, but we are here today uh, to celebrate this infrastructure that we're making improvements on and, and that's so important to our state. So we thank everybody that is participating 